Hello there, developer. Welcome to the video guide on how to build a Pokedex using application with the data scraped from Bulbapedia. There's a blog post that accompanies this guide available at application.com forward slash blog. You can find a link to the blog post in the description of this video. So let's get started. On the application homepage, click start now in the top right to jump into the application app. Once signed into application, we're going to create a new project in our workspace. I'm going to call mine Ampladex. Once the project is created, add a service resource and use the default settings. This service will be the backbone of our Pokedex, as it will be serving all of the data on the different monsters, typings, and generations. It's not a complex Pokedex, but it's more than enough to showcase what's possible. With that in mind, we'll create three entities in this service, generation, monster, and typing. For both generation and typing entities, add a field called name. The name field will be a single line text field. Additionally, it should be a unique field, a required field, and searchable. Time for the monster entity. Add a name field, which should be unique, required, and searchable. Next, add dex number. This should be unique, required, and searchable. However, its data type will be a whole number. Now, a biology field. It should be required and searchable, and its data type will be a multi-line text. Next, URL. This is a unique, required, searchable field. Finally, image, a required and searchable field. Time for the last two fields, generation and typing. Starting with generation, application will look through all of your entities and see that you have an entity called generation. Application will then suggest that a monster's generation field should be related to the generation entity, which is precisely what we want. Remember to set the field to be required and searchable. Now, create your typing field. And like the generation field above, application will attempt to build a relation between the field and the entity. In this case, though, a Pokemon can have multiple typings, so be sure to select one monster can be related to many typings. Again, remember to set the field to be required and searchable. One small thing before I forget. For this Pokedex to work for everyone, we'll need to make one change to our application service, which is to make some of the entity's actions public. By default, all requests to an application-generated backend requires the user to be authenticated. For this backend, we want to allow any developer to be able to search it. Therefore, we want to set the view and search actions to public for our newly created entities, monster, generation, and typing. Click into an entity and select permissions on the left-hand side. You'll be greeted with a robust UI for protecting your entities. Make sure to set the view and search actions to be public here. With the Pokedex backend created, you'll want to run the code locally. This requires syncing code to GitHub and then cloning it. On the left-hand side, click the GitHub icon and then go to project settings. You'll be sent to the project level GitHub sync settings. Select your organization or profile and then select the repository you want to sync to. Ideally, you'll have a blank repository on GitHub with at least one file, like a readme, to sync to. Finally, click Commit Changes and Build. This will take a minute or so to build. Once completed, click Open with GitHub in the bottom left to be directed to the new pull request created by application. There are going to be a lot of files on an initial sync, and it may actually slow down your browser. Fret not, though, just go ahead and merge the pull request. Jump back to the code page of your repo and get the git URL. Open up terminal, git clone the project locally, and then open the repo in your code editor of choice. Nicely done. We have our Pokedex, but we still need data on all 1008 Pokemon. Bulbapedia has all the data we need, so now all we need to do is scrape the data from them. Navigate to the server folder in Terminal and install the server dependencies. Now, we'll install Types Node, Cheerio, and isomorphic unfetch libraries from NPM to help scrape the data we need. Inside the server folder, create a folder called Data. Inside of that folder, create a file called Scraper.ts. Now's a great time to follow along with the blog post. 
as copying code will be easier than typing it in. But in the scraper.ts file, add the following code so we can stub out our scraper script. And take a look at the stop variable. It's actually a URL to the Bulbasaur entry in Bulbapedia. Bulbasaur is the first Pokemon in the National Pokedex, so it'll be the first Pokemon we scrape. It'll also be how we know when we get to the end of the National Pokedex. The way our scraper will work is as we scrape a Pokemon, we'll also scrape the URL of the next Pokemon in the Dex, and then scrape that one. When we get to the last Pokemon, rather than having no next Pokemon, Bulbapedia loops back to the first Pokemon. This is how we know we've reached the end. So the URL variable will keep updating as we scrape Bulbapedia in a do while loop. And once the value of the URL becomes the stop value again, we stop the loop. On Bulbapedia, we're going to be scraping the following information. There's the Pokemon's name, which has a unique ID which we can query. There's the Pokedex number, the Pokemon's picture, the Pokemon's typings, and a section called Biology, composed of some paragraph elements, which we'll also be scraping. One piece of information that Bulbapedia doesn't make easy to extract is what generation a Pokemon first appeared in. It is easy to figure out, though, as the Pokemon's index in the National Dex allows us to derive the generation it belongs to. Punch in the following code, or copy it from the blog article. Now we begin the scraping. As mentioned before, we'll do this with the do while loop. The first step of the loop is making an HTTP GET request to the Bulbapedia entry of a Pokemon, starting with Bulbasaur. We get the response, convert it into plain text, and load it into Cheerio. Cheerio is an implementation of core jQuery designed to run in the server. It's also what we'll use to rip the data of the Pokemon for our Pokedex. The first field we'll get is a Pokemon's name. Thankfully, all entries in Bulbapedia have an H1 heading with an ID of first heading, which makes it really easy to pull. The next field we need is the Pokedex number. We want to store the dex number as an actual number. However, Bulbapedia provides the number as a string prefixed with an octothorpe. What we'll do is we'll grab that string, we'll remove the octothorpe, and we'll parse it into an integer. Getting the image URL of a Pokemon is somewhat straightforward. Thankfully, all of them are wrapped in a tag with a href that starts with wiki forward slash file. So we'll use that in our query selector to get the image's source attribute value. Since it doesn't have a protocol in the URL, we'll manually add the HTTPS. Getting a Pokemon's biology information is a little bit more complex. It's not neatly wrapped in an element which we can get the text from so we have to find the heading element of the biology section of the page instead, and then iterate over its sibling elements until we reach the next heading. We'll get the text content of every P tag after the biology heading until we reach the next heading, which symbolizes a new section. The dirtiest part of this code is getting the typings of a Pokemon. There's no easy way to do it, and it's more complex than other things because some Pokemon have regional forms, mega evolutions, terrestrialized forms, and more, all of which may have different typings than their base form. Thankfully, I'm not an actual Pokemon professor, I'm just a developer advocate, so we'll get all the types regardless of their forms, capitalize them, and eliminate duplicates. Bulbapedia does some weird things with its typings, and you can get a lot of unknown types. Just go with this code and trust that it works. Now we're ready to create our Pokemon object and put it into our Pokedex array. First, create the Pokemon object and assign to it fields based on all the fields we scraped. Specifically for biology and generation, we'll do something a little bit different. For generation, we'll assign it to the result of the calculate generation function we created earlier when passing into it the dex number. For biology, we'll take the biology array that we created and join it together. Finally, push it into the Pokedex. For the loop to work, we need to make sure that we get the URL of the next Pokemon. This final bit of code inside the do while loop will get the URL and assign it to the URL variable. The way this works is that we'll scrape the path of the next Pokemon and then build a URL using the Bulbapedia URL as the base. The scraper will loop through all the Pokemon on Bulbapedia until it reaches the final one. Once at the end, the next Pokemon will be Bulbasaur, 
and the wild condition will be met, breaking the do wild loop. Once we scraped all the Pokemon, we'll need to save the data to seed it into our Pokedex backend. Add the following code to output the data as a JSON file. With everything set, let's scrape the data. In the terminal window inside of the server folder, run the command tsnode data forward slash scraper.ts, and then wait. After a minute or so, you'll have a file called Pokedex in the data folder with details on every Pokemon. Check out the newly created Pokedex JSON file. You'll find tons of data on all 1008 Pokemon. When running an application project locally, there's a few steps required to configure and seed your database. We have all the data of our Pokemon, so we're going to need to seed that into our backend. By default, application seeds an admin user, but has a file that allows us to seed our database with whatever information we want. To get started, we need to generate the Prisma client, which is the Node.js app that we use to communicate with the database. Run the following command, npm run prisma generate. Open the custom seed file inside of the scripts folder. Delete some of the logic found inside of the custom seed function. Then, import generation and typing from the Prisma client. Also, import the Pokedex JSON we just generated with our scraper script. We'll start by seeding the database with all the generation information of our Pokemon. This works by looping through the Pokemon in the Pokedex JSON that the scraper created, taking the generation field and prefixing it with the text generation. This will lead to many duplicates, so we'll put it all into a set to filter out the duplicates and then convert it back into an array. We'll then loop through the deduped generations and upsert them into our database. We upsert because if the generation already exists, we can update the field and get all the information from our database instead of creating a new one. We want to get the information of the generation from our database in order to map a Pokemon to a generation later on. Seeding the typing data of our Pokemon follows an almost identical process to the generation data. First, we'll take all the Pokemon and loop over them. We'll take each Pokemon's typings and flatten the data so all the types of Pokemon are inside of one array. Then, to dedupe them, we'll pass the array into a set and convert it back into an array. Finally, we'll also upsert the typing data, not to introduce duplicate data into our database, and to get the typing data from the database to map each Pokemon to its typing. With the typing and generation data securely in our database, we also have the necessary data to connect our Pokemon to them. As we upserted both bits of data, we also push the results into two different arrays. To figure out the unique identifiers for any generation or typing, we'll create two functions that'll loop through the data from the database and return the UID of the corresponding generation or type. Now, when we add our Pokemon data to the database, we can also link them to the appropriate generation or typing by calling these two functions. With everything in place, we can now seed our Pokemon data into the database. The process is as simple as a for loop, but now's a good time to explain how we've been using the upsert function for our entities. The upsert method takes in an argument of an object, and the object has three fields, where, update, and create. The where property is how we know which object in our monster entity to upsert. We don't have the unique identifier of a Pokemon, but we do have its name, which we set to be a unique field when we created the monster entity. So when upserting, we tell Prisma to only upsert a Pokemon with that specific name and we know there will only be one entry with that name, since that name is unique. The update field is only used when the Pokemon declared in the where field is found. While we only hope to see the database once, in case this function is rerun, the upsert function allows us to safely execute code without throwing any errors. So if the Pokemon is found, we just update the Pokemon's name to the same name as before, that way we don't make any real changes to the database. Finally, there's the create field. When a Pokemon isn't found with the where field, we'll want to insert a new Pokemon into the database. While most of the fields of the Pokemon data from the Pokedex JSON are mapped to the same name in the create fields object, the generation and typing fields are a bit different. To link typing to the typings entity and generation to the generation entity, we use connect to create a relationship between the monster and their generation and typings. Finally, it's time to seed the database with all the Pokemon data we scraped. First, we'll need a database to seed into, but application makes that easy. 
Included by default in the server folder is a file called docker compose db yml with the configuration required to spin up a PostgreSQL instance. When you run the backend locally, it'll be configured to connect to this instance. The only catch is that you need to have Docker installed and running. Assuming you have Docker installed and running, execute the following command, npm run docker db. Then run the command npm run db init to initialize the database by creating the necessary schemas and seeding the database using the logic we added to the custom seed ts file. Congratulations, you've done it. You've scraped all 1008 Pokemon and added them to your own Pokedex that you made with the help of application. I bet you want to see the fruits of your labor. So run the command npm start to start running the server. After a minute or so, the server should be up and running at localhost port 3000, though that URL won't do much. Instead, visit localhost 3000 forward slash GraphQL to be greeted by the GraphQL playground. Clicking on Docs and Schema on the right-hand side will show you everything you can do and see using the Pokedex. What I'll do now is I'll just write a query searching for all monsters containing the name Mew, and hopefully we'll see Mewtwo and Mew show up. On the right-hand side, you can see our query executed, and both Mewtwo and Mew show up. So we did it. We built a Pokedex with the help of Application and Bulbapedia. This required us to build a backend, scrape data from the web, and seed a database, all of which are valuable skills for whatever adventure your coding journey may take you to next. Be sure to check out the links in the description, as you'll find this video's accompanying blog article, a link to a deployed version of this Pokedex, and a link to our Discord community, where you can chat with like-minded developers, as well as reach out to members of the team with any questions you have. Until next time, good luck.